the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, January 21st, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Well, following an influential think tank's call for a humanitarian real politics stunt to be pulled in order to weaken President Assad's position, well, uh, miraculously, a report has emerged just 24 hours before the Geneva II conference, which, uh, which alleges to show systematic torture and abuse by the Assad regime. If you have 11,000 bodies dealt with in a systematic way, then you can reasonably infer that this is a pattern of behavior which has to have higher authority. That was Jeffrey Nice. He was on the legal team that inspected the authenticity of this report, which includes 55,000 digital images alleged to show evidence of 11,000 Syrian detainees tortured, starved, and executed. Now, the images were reportedly smuggled out of Syria by a defector named Caesar. He was a military police photographer who worked for the government for 13 years, and his job was to photograph bodies of detainees that were believed to have died under torture. Now, some are saying that, this, that the images are proof of abuse by the Assad regime, but the report raises questions, not only considering the timing of the release, but also the fact that the report was commissioned by Qatar, which has been an enthusiastic backer of the opposition rebels since day one. A spokesman for the Syrian Ministry of Information questioned the report's evidence, telling the BBC it was unclear where the information had come from or if the photographs were from Syria or from outside Syria, and he added that he was astonished at the figure of 11,000 victims, saying that it had not been raised before this report. Now, this report also arrives just days after the results of an MIT study were published. They concluded that the chemical weapons attack on Ghouta could not possibly have been launched from government-controlled areas. Now, you'll recall that that whole chemical weapons attack was about to serve as the pretext for going to war with Syria. We told you the day it happened that it was most likely the chemical weapons were launched by the Western-backed Syrian rebels who are aligned with al-Qaeda. And now here, MIT is backing that up with their study. They say it's, it's basic math. You can just see the trajectory that this is where the weapons came from. And so here we have a clear political agenda with the release of this Qatar report. But the MIT study is being completely ignored by the mainstream media because it doesn't fit their agenda which is, once again, the U.S. government trying to gear up and get us here in America in alignment with invading Syria under the pretext of a humanitarian crisis. But we didn't buy it last year. Over 80 percent of the American people were against invading Syria, and we're not going to buy it now. The West started the war. And now while these think tanks are calling for this humanitarian invasion of Syria, they're also calling for an extraordinary crisis here in America. They said that they needed to regain control over those of us who have become awakened, and they need to regain control over our minds with some extraordinary crisis. But could FEMA be preparing for a pandemic? The Federal Emergency Management Agency is looking for contractors to supply 40-yard-sized dumpsters, along with experts who can dispose of contaminated biomedical waste during a national emergency. The request for information appears on the FedBizOps website and asks for feedback from waste removal industry vendors that can potentially provide either dumpster service and or biomedical waste collection and removal services during emergency response events within the continental United States. Now we know that this year's flu season is being hyped up as being really dangerous and deadly. And of course that's only fueling this concern that the agency is preparing for a pandemic. But how are pharmaceutical companies leaving us vulnerable? It's strange that back in the fall, there was one story after another in every country that Big Pharma was finished with antibiotics. No more research on new drugs to replace those that bacteria have developed resistance. And they were going to focus solely on viruses and vaccines. It was strange enough that they would declare they were no longer even concerned about controlling bacterial infections. But what you may not have noticed is the skyrocketing price and limited availability of doxycycline, a common antibiotic. Doxycycline is often prescribed in the early stages of exposure to Lyme disease, as a prophylactic for malaria, as a follow-up to dental work, and many other uses. 
And a prescription that used to cost four to five dollars now costs between 160 and 200 dollars if you can find a supply. There was an abrupt spike in cost about a year ago. The LA Times reported on it. Then a couple of months later, the CDC pointed out that there was a shortage. But after a year, the price is still holding firm at about a 50-fold increase. If there were a free market, a competitive free market in generic drugs, companies would enter the market, increase supply to take advantage of the higher price, and the price would go down. But not in the consolidated cartel of pharmaceuticals. And it's not a case of restricting generics in order to drive people to new, more expensive drugs. In this case, they're not interested in providing new antibiotics. So when a commonly used drug increases 40 to 50 times in a price spike and stays there, the question is, is the pharmaceutical cartel simply price gouging? Or is this a part of a push to get people to buy more medical insurance? Or is it something more sinister, like are they removing all antibiotics to intentionally leave the population helpless to a superbug? or to a weaponized bacterial outbreak. Whatever's behind this, antibiotics have been overprescribed, they've been misused with livestock, and now we have strains that are created that are drug resistant, and the response of the pharmaceuticals is to gouge people on price and abandon research. You need to do your own research into safe and effective alternatives to pharmaceuticals, especially for infections. Well, the U.S. Army is considering replacing thousands of troops with robots as it's dealing with sweeping troop cuts. A senior American officer has said that he's considering shrinking the size of the Army's brigade combat teams by a quarter and replacing the lost troops with robots and remote-controlled vehicles. Options under discussion include trains of robot vehicles that would follow human drivers in long supply convoys. The head of the Army's Training and Doctrine Command said the Army should follow the lead of the Navy in using technology to cut manpower, given the fact that people are the major cost. So while I'm all for reducing the lives of soldiers lost on the field, replacing them with these autonomous robotic killing machines does not sound like a good alternative. It's actually quite frightening, and considering the American drone program that's already killing tons of innocent civilians overseas, it's definitely not something that I want to see as the new battleground. But just as the government is cutting even more government jobs and replacing them with machines, unprecedented employment numbers are being reported. But it's a little contrary to all the happy talk that's coming out of D.C. According to a Wall Street advisor, the actual unemployment rate is 37.2 percent. And he says that the misery index is the worst in 40 years. Now, this advisor is David John Murata, who we recently reported he had advised anyone who was worried about an imploding economy to get a gun. And he said that the government just isn't being honest in how it calculates those out of the workforce, or inflation. The unemployment rate, he says, only describes people who are currently working or looking for work, leaving out the number of people who aren't able to, do not want to, or cannot find a way to work. Unemployment in its truest definition, meaning the portion of people who do not have any job, is 37.2%. And of course, that is well above the Fed advertised unemployment rate of 6.7%. But why does the Fed want to underreport? Well, in addition to not wanting the Obama administration to look like huge failures, it's in order to maintain the PSYOP that everything's fine and they've got it all under control. Well, stick around because coming up, Jakari Jackson avoids being manhandled by the TSA and instead challenges their authority. And then we'll follow that up with some submissions from our latest We Will Resist TSA and NSA Tyranny film contest. Stick around. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible 
pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America, high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. I have had enough of censorship in this country and worldwide. We were all brought up being taught about authoritarian countries like Nazi Germany or communist China or Russia where the press is censored. But I read hundreds of news articles a day and I'm here to tell you the United States is as censored or worse than many authoritarian regimes. I send my reporters all over the country. I have been out myself hundreds of times and in almost every case whether it's a water treatment plant in California or the Austin Bergstrom Airport, the police show up and say, you can't film without a permit, you can't film without permission. I've been in D.C. multiple times. They do not issue permits for news. And the police come and say, you can't film monuments like the Washington Monument. Give me a break from 500 yards away on a sidewalk that you've got to get a permit. Then you say, well, wait, the city doesn't give permits. And they say, it doesn't matter, we're going to arrest you. So it's the pure threat of force and the gun outside of law. It happened today again when Jakari Jackson and others went down to the airport to ask the public about the fact that actual Al-Qaeda-connected, listed terrorist Muslim Brotherhood have been brought into the country and get to bypass TSA. And the police came out and said, you got to have a permit. Let me explain something. A permit is if you want to block off a major road in New York for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. A permit is if you want to shoot a commercial or a Hollywood movie on the street. Cops have to be there. Fees have to be paid. Officers have to be paid for. If you as a news gathering organization under precedent, First Amendment, common law, you name it, want to interview people on the sidewalk, not interfering with the walkways, not interfering with the processing. If you want to interview people about what's happening at the airport, it's totally, completely protected, and it's been fought in court over and over again. It's 100%. But it doesn't matter. By executive fiat and pure intimidation, they're violating the First Amendment. So here is the latest in a long train of abuses. If we don't have the First Amendment right of the press to do interviews on city streets and sidewalks, we have no First Amendment. Here's Jakari Jackson's report, man on the street, and the police violating the First Amendment. But it's okay because they're just following orders and the cop tells him he's a big fan. We need to not just be angry at this police officer. We need to demand they follow the First Amendment. And if the cops in the future do the right thing and allow the First Amendment in clearly protected areas, then we need to back those police officers up with the corrupt cities and bureaucrats that are ordering them to do unconstitutional things. Because these police are doing this under orders. And it's easy to blame them. How about we blame ourselves for letting the system get this corrupt to think that in the land of the free...